Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at Elite Dangerous. Now, I want to answer a question that I'm asked all the time. What is the best way for a starting character to make money in Elite Dangerous? Is it trading? Is it combat? Is it the missions? No, the answer well, is challenging. the dealing of illicit goods. Now, let's just step back for a second. If you are a new pilot, that's barely learning to play the game, trading does seem very attractive. It's an easy way to reliably make money, especially when you use some of the trading tools. The problem is you start out with a free Sidewinder that only has four tons cargo space, which means that the amount of cash you can actually make per trade run is pretty lousy. However, I want to step back again and here, what we said was, it was a free Sidewinder. That means, if you get destroyed, consequences aren't that bad. So all you need to do is think of something where it doesn't matter where it gets destroyed. Something perhaps high risk. And, I would say, what you do is you fly to an anarchic system where the rule of law is perhaps uh, left in the hands of the inhabitants rather than, say, the federal authorities. Uh, and those places will tend to have less security enforcement, they will have more pirates, they will have wrecks floating in space at unidentified signal sites, and of course they will have black markets. All this combines mean that you can fly around near Freeport very slowly, you can just basically set your velocity to you know, a couple of hundred uh, kilometers per second, which seems like a lot, but is actually incredibly slow for the super cruise drive. And as you keep checking your side panel, you will see unidentified signal sources, and that's what I'm looking for right now. They will literally just pop up at somewhat regular intervals, being randomly generated by the game. And at these sites, you can find a number of things that you might want to, uh, the number of things you might want to profit from, let's say. So I'm just flying over the planets. This is over the rings. This is the location near to uh, your starting system, Iranin. This is uh, one jump away. This is not necessarily the best place to start in multiplayer because you will find that there are a lot of people that like to sit at the stations and pirate things. Oh, look! It turns out that uh, I'm getting interdicted first. Okay, so you can also get hostile pirates. It doesn't matter if they blow up your ship, it's free, but all the same, make sure you put all the power to engines and try to get as far away from him as possible before firing up your super cruise and getting out of there. There you go, frame shift is online. If you get this inhibited by factor of six, just cancel the jump and press J again, and that might mean that you've pulled a little further away, you know, it, it's all about proximity, if you're too close then it'll take longer to charge. So I'm actually surprised at how long it is taking for these things to show up. There I am, sitting at 30 kilometers per second, a veritable snail's pace. Why, only something as large as a planet would move that slowly. And indeed, that's the speed that the Earth moves through space around the Sun. We're just going to keep looking for for these sites to turn up. They're randomly generated. Right now, I believe there's no common... Uh, there's no sharing, I believe, between the instances. Now, if you're playing in multiplayer, there is also the option of private groups. You know, so you basically attach yourself to a private group of players, and you will only see those players. Okay, oh, there's an unidentified signal source, so we select it to lock onto it, and now we have to find it. There it is, 1,300 kilometers away. So as soon as I get close, I'm going to press J to drop out, and there we go. So now, whatever's in here, it might be loot, it might be something else, it might be an encounter, or it might be pirates, and it's loot floating in space. It is bauxite. Bauxite is practically worthless in this system, so just get out of here. Bauxite will get you roughly 10 credits per tonne on the black market. It is not worth looking at. Leave it be, get out of here. The other one I've seen is Coltan. Coltan will get you about 450. Definitely worth it. 
So, I mean, the whole idea here is what we're looking for is gold. Gold is going to get you about 4,500 credits per tonne, so that's like, you know, 19,000, 18, 19,000 credits for a single site. Assuming you can get it to the to Freeport and then sell it. But the upside is, if you get shot and destroyed with all your cargo, it costs you nothing. Now you see, because I'm travelling at only 30 kilometers per second, it placed the, the site at about 300 kilometers. so literally I just targeted it and pressed J to drop out. Okay, nothing here. Uh, nothing here by the looks of things. Nobody here but us owls. Okay, well just wait for Frameshift to come back online and get out of here I guess. Nothing here. Anyway, yeah, so this is essentially to get starting capital. If you do a few of these, you will have enough money to upgrade to a hauler. And a hauler can then be used for some serious trading. At that point, go to the trade tools, use the trade tools, and of course, make money very quickly. Uh, from there, you can upgrade to a Cobra, which is a larger cargo bay, and then there's a Lake on Type 6 and a Lake on Type 9. Once you get to a lake on type 9, you're making bank. The only danger with the lake on type 9 is that you have to spend a lot of money to fill its cargo hold, and if you get blown up, which is a real possibility, you will lose all the cash that you have invested into that particular run. Oh, we're getting another interdiction. I am surprised at how long this is taking. Well, let's just take it in the chin and get out of here. So again, throttle up to 100%, find out where they are, you want to turn away from them to make sure they don't come in close. Even, it is possible they do start getting some shots off depending upon how things are, especially if you're in a slow Drive spacecraft. Oh, there we go, in inhibited Drive by charging. factor of 6, but then I cancel it and bring it back up. Now I charge and I'm off again. Three, two, one. one. And sayonara, suckers. Okay, once again, looking for an unidentified signal site that has some gold in it. It must be somewhere, that sweet, sweet gold. Coltan, as I said, it's okay, but it's only going to get you 2,000. It's better to just stay out and keep looking. Now, it's also possible to... Uh, pick up this gold or pick up this cargo and take it to another system which has a black market. Uh, an example is you can pick up in sticks and I think you can take it to iBootis. That's an interesting option because there you have less chance of players camping the station and shooting you as you try to dock. Instead you have to actually smuggle it. Oh there, there we go, yet another unidentified signal source. Please have some gold for me. I see nothing. I see nothing. Oh, and I see hostiles. So, throttle up, boost, get away, get away, get away. If you need to smuggle into a, I say a high sec, if you want to struggle, uh, smuggle into a station that has a proper police force, you need to do it quickly and you need to do it using a you know, run silent mode which will stop your heat from escaping. And it's also a good idea to turn off power to things like your shields and your life support so that you can safely get past their sensors, or rather so that you don't show up in their sensors for long enough for them to scan you. You can skirt around the station at a great distance and then fly in the front door at top speed. Okay, it's another unidentified signal site. Let's see if we've got something. Gold! There, all that. Ten minutes. It's not even ten minutes I've spent on this, right? And I've got gold here. Now, the only danger is... Well, no, one more danger is that it could cargo be a trap. So you have to deploy the cargo scoop. And you look at the little display to the left of the, the scanner. You want to keep that canister exactly in the middle there. If it goes too far off, you will crash it into your hull and lose it. And so far I see no hostiles, but I'm wary for them, nevertheless. Oh, you can use the lateral 
thrusters to kind of nudge the thing and keep it in the center. Once you do this a lot, you'll get very good at it. Uh, and especially when you're doing this under fire. Um, if you do come under fire, first thing you want to do is shut down your cargo scoop because it will really affect your maneuverability. Cargo scoop and landing gear being out will really slow you down. Okay, there we go. And... Oh! Oh, I got it! Okay, I thought I crashed into it, but... There we go. Cargo scoop retracted. And... Fire up the jump drive, car fire up super cruise. We're now just going to go straight back to Freeport, celebrate the freedom that they offer by coming in with four tons of stolen gold and sell it to them, sell it to the highest bidder that will bid in a shady corner of the market. There we go. And you know, the way I've done this, we're practically right on top of Freeport, so we don't have to go very far. Now, of course, Future versions of the game will probably nerf this, but right now it's a really good way to do things. I won't be surprised if the mix of sites change, if the way sites uh, spawn will be modified. Uh, I also won't be surprised if they make it less of a crime to smuggle instead. I mean, right now, smuggling is pretty much you get caught and you get killed. Which seems a little extreme, even for someone like me who, you know... <laughs> Who likes my games to be difficult? Okay, so I'm just going to go in the front here. It doesn't look like there's any other players around. You will know the other players, of course, because their icons will show up as empty shapes. If you see other players here, it's very likely that they're here just to cause you trouble. You personally, they've been waiting for you, waiting for your name to come by so they can shoot you out of the sky. They're not griefing, it's personal. But seriously, given the speed at which you will generally be flying through the docking bay when there's other players around, they're probably not going to have time to specifically target your cargo hatch. So even if they blow you up, you're not going to drop your cargo and give it to them. No, it's going to be, uh, it's probably going to go down with the ship and you can at least uh, keep that in mind. Have that, have that give you some solace as you watch your ship burn up underneath their class 8 plasma accelerators okay docking bay 34 so all I'm gonna do is fly in as fast as possible as soon as I'm inside I'm gonna throttle down to zero we are inside the safety zone bingo and oh, excellent and slow down to zero it's a good idea to use the compass. You see the compass, uh, which is to the top right of the radar? That shows you where the target pad is. So what I've done is I've switched it into reverse. I'm flying backwards because it's showing me that it's behind me. So I'm going to keep traveling backwards until it turns into a solid dot. There, it turned into a solid dot, which means I'm pretty much right over landing pad 34. Look at that. The time to just get in and dock. Whoop. Oh, yes, yeah, still in reverse. Time to go forwards and landed. Touchdown. Now to talk to Arthur Daly and see if I can make myself a deal. Welcome to Freeport. Welcome. Okay, come on. Uh, not commodities market, you want to go to the black market, which is not available in every station, but it is available here. There you go, gold. Offer to sell. 18,368 credits. Thank you very much. That was very profitable. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.